the first demonstration that microbiome differences could change the health of a host was in obesity, and my lab has been working on that topic for the last 15 years, although there are still a lot of obese people, so clearly we have not solved the problem yet. Except in a mouse, uh, it is already possible to take a mouse and make it fatter or thinner by changing its microbes. And what we are trying to do is gain an understanding of how it works in animals so we can apply it back to humans. But if you have a fat human and a thin human, you can tell them apart from their microbes with 90% accuracy or more. Uh, what is more, you can also transplant their microbes into a mouse that is raised in a bubble with none of its own microbes. And if it gets the microbes from the fat person, the mouse will become fat. Whereas if it gets the microbes from the lean person, it will remain lean. So that is how we know there is causality, at least in the animal model. So there is a lot of work at the moment going on trying to figure out which microbes are most involved in obesity or in leanness and also to control that process. One thing that is fascinating to me is uh, in that time, the last 15 years, uh, obesity has become so much more prevalent a problem in, uh, through, throughout the world rather than in just the most uh, already developed countries. And uh, for example, when I was in Bangladesh in 2012, I was amazed to see obesity clinics all through Dhaka. And I was even more astonished recently to hear that even, even in very poor countries, obesity is often more of a problem than malnutrition. And you can imagine uh, how Charles Dickens and other writers of the 19th century would have been amazed had they been told that 150 years in the future, the problem that poor people would have was that they had too much food and that they were fat. But that is a very simplistic answer because uh, obesity is not so much about having too much food as having the wrong kind of food and uh, having food that does not have the nutrients that you need to feed your microbiome such as fiber but also many other uh, natural compounds that we are finding in plants as well as the ones that are already well known. And so a huge problem may be the use of ultra processed foods and artificial sweeteners and emulsifiers and other compounds that our bodies and our microbes have never been exposed to before in these diets that are contributing tremendously to the global obesity epidemic. Governments need to uh, incorporate the benefit provided by microbes, but also, uh, also mitigate the harms caused by microbes. And one problem at the moment is there is no regulation on probiotics that may or may not have any effect and may not have in the bottle what they have on the label. Uh, and also unregulated use of fecal transplants, where uh, fecal transplants have tremendous potential, but until that potential is proven through clinical trials, which should definitely be supported, it is very risky to uh, offer them as an unregulated regulated service. Um, and uh, I, I, know that, uh, I know that enforcement in many countries is not very, is not very strict. In the United States, uh, the stool is regulated as a drug, which has its own problems, but uh, at least there is very strict monitoring and very, uh, very, very strict regulation of, uh, uh, of who these therapies will be tried on um, while, they are, while they are still largely untested. And for Clostridium difficile infection, fecal transplant has saved many lives. However, for other uh, indications, for other diseases, we do not yet know to nearly the same extent if it will work. Um, in, terms of, in terms of providing benefits of what we are learning about microbes and nutrition, um, the, uh, the ingredient labeling law that was introduced in Chile uh, um, to uh, provide warning labels on foods is already uh, setting the standard for such efforts worldwide and is a very important step. Um, what, we, what we need to complement it with is also labels for food that contains ingredients that are good so that you can easily pick those out. Uh, and also, at some point, move away from labeling the ingredient that it contains uh, to instead having uh, a label for the effect on your body, as we understand more about that. So much in the way that cigarettes move from warning about nicotine and tar to warning that they will kill you. In the same way, uh, with food ingredients, we need to move away from saying that it contains this ingredient or that ingredient, and towards saying it is processed in a way that will kill you, whether that's through obesity, through accelerated aging, uh, through stripping off the lining of your gut, as some emulsifiers do, or the, very, uh, or the many other mechanisms. 
And so, uh, so, so I think, um, so, so I think uh, it is something where, just like the positive aspects of nutrition, of uh, supplementing foods with necessary vitamins, was done through a combination of regulation and public health initiatives and uh, public-private partnerships. The same kind of thing will be needed to uh, make the food supply healthy for uh, for for these uh, for these uh, diseases that are chronic diseases that are affecting us today, rather than affecting us a century ago. The incredible diversity of the microbial world is a huge rebuke to our egos and the reason why is that uh, in the material that you have in your gut uh, you have more cells than you have in the rest of your body, only microbial cells, not human ones with the human genome, and you have somewhere between a hundred and a thousand times as many microbial genes as we do human genes uh, on and inside our bodies. So we have this tremendous diversity that we've literally just been flushing down the toilet without even trying to study it. And being able to take all of that information that we're throwing away and using it to guide our health, uh, there is still a lot of science to do before it is as routine as, say, pulling out your phone and using Google Maps. But that is the direction it is headed, that instead of having a vague sense that your microbiome can change, you will be able to get a very detailed uh, set of directions about where you want to take it and how you're going to do that turn by turn in terms of nutrition, in terms of drugs, in terms of other ways you can modify your microbiome. Thank you.